Okay, so we're going to do an impressionism project, project, and specifically we're going to do a pointillism project. And so hopefully you've watched that video and you see that pointillism is dots put together. And so the project we're going to do is a sunrise, kind of like this. And this one's a little bigger. I'm just going to show you on eight and a half by eleven. It doesn't take as long that way. And since you're working on your desks in your room, it's not quite so big. So hopefully it won't be quite as messy since it doesn't fill up the whole desk. So what they're going to need is um, a piece of white paper. Computer paper is fine. A little heavier would be better, but the computer paper will be fine. They're going to need a pile of Q-tips, um, a plate to serve as their palette. They're going to need a ruler and a lid or something circular. I put lids in there with your art supplies, so something circular like that to help draw their um, where their sun's going to go. And they'll need a pencil and eraser. And then you'll need the temper paints that look like this in there and just all the different variety of colors. So mainly the colors we're going to use are blue, green, purple, yellow, orange, red. So they shouldn't need any brown or black or white. So um, you're gonna, they're going to start, and I'm going to do this with the Sharpie so you can see it, but you want them to do it with pencil. Students should be doing this in pencil, but I just wanted to make sure they can see what I'm doing. So you're going to take the ruler and about two thirds, and it does not have to be exact, but about two thirds of the way up, they're going to draw their horizon line. And that would be a good term for them to learn and understand. Horizon is where the sky meets the land. And it's where we get the word horizontal. So you can talk about that, talk about horizon line. And then you're going to use a lid and just choose one of those lids that you think is appropriate. There's plenty of them in there. You want to put it in the center and you want to have it almost touch the top. And then really they only need to do half of that to make it touch the line like this. So it should, hopefully you can see that, look like this. And they've done this in pencil. Again, I'm just doing it in Sharpie so you can see it. And then that makes their template they're going to use to make their sky. Okay. And then I like to start with the sun just because I think it's easier. And if they remember when they looked at the pointillism video, um, everything was a variety of colors put together. It wasn't just one color of dots. And then um, like the sun was yellow. The sun would be made up of um, red, orange, and yellow dots. But if they want it to appear yellow, they would use more yellow paint than they would the red or the orange. And then I would, to work on color mixing, I would just have them take their, if I can get that in the frame, a little bit of the red and a little bit of the yellow and just mix it and make their own orange. If you just want to use the orange tempera the way it is, that is completely fine. But this is a really good lesson in color mixing and how yellow and red make orange. So they can just mix and have some orange here in the middle. Okay. And then they should have one Q-tip for every color. And the color they want to show the most should put on last. So put the darker color on first. See, hopefully you can see that. And they're just gonna do dots. Okay. And this is their sun. So it goes mainly right in the middle. And you want the sun to appear lighter as it goes towards the center. So darker on the outside, and then just a few of these on the inside. So hopefully you can see that like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead while I have my red and do quite a few of them out here because they want, you want the red to light and the orange color to fade out into the blue sky. So it looks like your horizon, your sunset is lighting up the whole sky. So I'm going to go about like that. And then I'm going to take where this line met the horizon line and go down like this. And I don't want a solid line, but this kind of gives myself a guideline. So you can see that where the reflection on the water will be. Okay, and then I kind of want to go back and forth in lines like this, so it feels like water. And I can I want to go a little bit outside that line. And not everyone has to go all the way across. In fact, it will look better if it doesn't, but if they want to do it that way, it's totally fine. Okay. 
and I'm just letting you watch me do this with the red and then I'm going to come in and do the exact same thing with the orange and the heaviest concentration of these colors again will be right where the sun is peeking up over that horizon okay so I'm going to show you my red and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the orange and then I will come back and show you so this is what we have so far okay Okay, so I finished my orange. Just to let you see that there. Okay, so this is kind of what it should look like when it has red and orange in it. Um, and if they have more, it's okay. They just need to remember down here in the water part, they need to leave more white paper showing through because they're going to put blue water in that part. This part up here in the sun doesn't matter as much if they if they get that pretty well covered. But this is kind of what it should look like at this point. And now I'm going to do the yellow. Okay. And I'll do that and then show you what that's like. Okay, so this is kind of what we have. And then next, I'm going to go with green. And I'm only going to put green in the water because you got to make a little differenti differentiation between the sky and the water. So only the water is going to have green in it. And then only the sky is going to have a little bit of purple in it. And then they'll both have blues in it. So I think that will help make it look different. So I'm going to use a green. And I'm going to use kind of a um, yellowy green, so we're just going to mix that. And you can either do that or they can just use straight green. It'll be fine too. But I'm just going to take this little bit of green here and put my yellow with it and make a nice bright green color. Okay? So that's what I would do. And then they're just going to put that in the water part and they just make lines so i say lines it's still dots because it's pointillism but hopefully you can see how those kind of go left to right because that makes it look like water okay if those go left to right so and they can put a few of those in here in the little place where the sun rays are they can definitely do that okay so they're going to get quite a few so i'll pause that and then i'll show you how okay so here's the green just in the bottom, okay? And you wouldn't put it up in the sky part and see how it looks like it's, they kind of make uh, dotted lines. That's kind of what you want to do so it looks like water. And notice I definitely did put some green in the, the sunshiny part right there. So just do green there. So then that's it for the green. And I'm going to do the same thing for the purple on the top, but I'm not going to worry about it being in lines, okay? Okay. Okay, so you can see where I did the purple, and notice the purple in the sky isn't in lines. It just works its way around the circle, and there isn't a lot of it, and it fades out as you go out to the end. And that would be great if students do it that way. If they don't, it's the end of the world, but that makes it look like the sun is kind of dissipating out into the, into the sunset of the sky there. So then next, we're going to put in blue, and I would just do a good old plain normal blue to start and then we'll add like a little tealy blue to it and we'll do that by just or pastel blue by just putting in a tiny little bit of yellow not very much um and we'll do it that way so just start with the blue and you're going to put blue in the sky but in the sky you're going to do you're going to work around the circle and just kind of do it randomly you're not going to make them look like lines so and then just work it around here, not actually in the sun, just in the sky and start filling those spots in. And then in the water, you're going to do it more lying like that. And definitely some in the inside here of the sun rays there. Okay, I'm just going to go in and put a lot of blue in there. Kind of do it in lines like I did with the green. Okay, I'll show you when I get that. Okay, so I've done the dark blue and you can see how random the dark blue is on the top. So that has to do with the direction you did them. So those are just all over the place on the top and then they're in lines at on the bottom part that's the water. So it really helps see the difference. And then I think what looks good is just a different shade of blue and I have some teal paint that I'll leave in there but I don't know if there'll be enough of that. So you may have to get a white um, just to make a pale shade of blue. So I just mixed a white and blue together here, and I've got this nice baby blue color just because you need another blue. 
to fill in. And then the goal is to get as few white gaps showing as possible. And that doesn't mean every single white gap has to be covered, but they don't want, you don't want very many in there. So then this last step is just to come in with the light blue and hit those places that have big gaps again and randomly again on the top. Okay, and then in lines down here in lines. Okay, and again, the place where I have the most um, white gaps is in my sun ray here. So I really need to hit that quite a bit with the light blue color and really try to make do it in lines of color so it looks like water. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so here's the finished project. All right, hopefully you can tell that the water kind of goes in lines and the sky doesn't. And notice, I mean, most of the white is covered. There's still a little white, but most of it is covered. So we filled that up. And so this is a great first pointillism project. It's wet right now. When it dries, it will probably be a little bit wrinkly. You're gonna need to not let them dry really good. Don't let them touch each other. And um, then when it's going to dry, you can iron it upside down, um, just like we did the watercolor project earlier. So you could iron it to flatten it out. So hopefully that's a good project for the kids. It's kind of a foolproof one. This would be a great fair project. It looks really nice, matted up. So it might be a good project for that. Good luck.